my name is Melissa and welcome to Teach, Read, Play. In this video, I'm going to help you learn some strategies and techniques that you can use to help your child or your children in the classroom with multiplication strategies. I hope you enjoy the video. Please remember to comment, like and subscribe and turn notifications on to see more content like this. So, what are multiplication strategies and how do we encourage children to use them? Firstly, before children attempt to learn any times tables or any multiplication symbols, they should understand the concept of what is happening to numbers when they're being multiplied. This is always the first step to any mathematical concept. So children need to visually understand what is happening to those numbers. So one of the first methods that I always use when teaching times tables is starting off with something that we call manipulatives. They're also called resources as well. Now this is anything that you have that is physical for children to pick up and to move around to help them with their mathematical concepts. So today I have some buttons and this is the manipulative that I will use. So my manipulatives are here. Cubes and other resources are also used to help encourage mathematical concepts. So our first strategy is starting to use manipulatives to help us understand what is happening to numbers when they are being multiplied. So in this video, I'm only going to work on one times table. And that times table today is the two times tables. And we're going to go into real depth and understand what is happening when we multiply by two. So this would be, if I was in a classroom, I would always just start off with one times table. So don't try to get children to learn multiple times tables at the same time. You want them to go into real depth with just learning one. So, when starting off, you might start off with a question for the children to explore. So, I might say that I have three friends and my three friends each have two sweets. How many sweets do they all have together? So, children now start exploring that inquiry. I've given them a question and they, they can speak to one another about it. Or if you're at home, you can speak to your child about it. So how would we attempt this question? Then you start using the strategies to help them. So let me show you strategy number one. So take this concept. So there are three children who have two sweets each and how many sweets do they have all together? So you want to start off with using the manipulatives as we've discussed. So you can use anything in your home or you can use buttons, counters, whatever suits you best. So first thing that you want to do is start thinking about what does the question ask you? So there are three children and each have two sweets. So two sweets for one child. You then want to get them to think about well, what do they need to do next? So there's two sweets for one child, another two sweets for another child, and another two sweets for another child. You then need to work out how many sweets there are all together. Now how can we do this? We can count one, two, three, four, five, six. But you also want to encourage a child to start exploring counting in twos. So here we have two, here we have another two, two and two is four, and another two is six. So now we know what the answer is, we can now start to explore this answer in depth. So taking these resources, we've now worked with the concrete method. This is always the first strategy to learning times tables. Now, we now can start to move these concrete materials and we can replace these concrete materials with a pictorial representation, with dots. Or you might, a child might also like to use lines or stars, hearts, dinosaurs, whatever they want to use. But I'm going to start off with just dots. So, two, this represents the two sweets. And I'm going to group it because that's for one child. 
and move those away. I'm now going to use two over here and group it because that's now for another child. I'm now going to do the last two and group it because that's another child. Now, as you can see, we've now got three groups of two. This is our pictorial method. Now I can see that there are three groups of two. I can also show each two by counting up in two. So we can again verbally rehearse it. So it's two, four, six. So you can write two, four, six. That's how another way that a child can show you pictorially how they count in twos. This is reinforcing their two times tables and you can now start to explore with the child that this is the two times tables that they're using. Next! You can use a number line. So you can show them on the number line. So we, one child has two, the other child has then it's four, two and two make four, and then another two is six. The child has, all the children together have six. You can now start to write the abstract method. So here, we've shown a number line of counting in twos. Now, you can also start moving on and saying, well, how does that look as a times table? And it looks like this. Two, and it looks like this. Three times two equals six. This is also the same as saying three groups of two is six. So here we have all three methods explored. So we've explored our concrete methods, moving on to our pictorial methods, and then deepening our understanding with our abstract methods. Once children have secured this, you can then start saying, well, I'm wondering, how would you know another way to show your two times tables? What actually is happening each time you count in twos? And you can say, well, actually it was two, and then we added another two, and then we had to add another two again. And this method is called repeated addition. And this is another way you can explain this to the children. Once the children have explored this, you can then start deepening their understanding of the two times tables. Like this. Using a number line to explore in counting in twos. So you've got your number line here. And let's explore counting in twos. You can carry on doing this verbally and with your counters. So here we've got two. Now before even starting off with two, you can start off with zero on your number line, and then you can say two. Then you want another two. You can say to the child, right, how many is that now? And they should be able to look at that, and instead of counting all of those, they can see two, and another two, which makes four. Then you can have another two. Now you've explored that two times three is six. Now you can start asking questions like, what about another two? Eight. Another two. Ten. Another two. Twelve. Another two. Fourteen. Now once you've done that, you can start saying, right, is there a way that we can write out these times tables? Let's look at them. Grouping again. Keeping them organised in small groups really helps to reinforce to a child that every time that we use a multiplication, they are being counted up in groups. So here we can start to write the times tables. So we can say, right, one group of two. One 
group of two. Now we'll start introducing that multiplication symbol and exploring what that is. This means that we are using multiple groups of two. One group of two is equal to two. Two groups of two. Two times two is four. Three groups of two is six. And then you can continue this. Once the child is able to start exploring all of the different times tables, you can then start getting them to pick out any patterns that they find. Now, if your child is in year one or in year two, you really want to get them to start picking out the different patterns that they can see. Can they see any patterns so far in the timetables written out? Now, if the child can't explore that, you want to start saying to them, right, all of these numbers here, are called even numbers that means that they are all put into even numbers can you start seeing any patterns you can continue to count up to find any patterns and the patterns that they might start to explore is that they all end in two four six eight or zero and this is a great method to help them learn the patterns in their times tables so here, really going into depth is a great strategy to help children learn their times tables. So I hope that you found those strategies useful. These are strategies that you can use for any times table that your child is learning. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.